Workforce Identity Federation allows you to set up an identity pool to use a third-party identity provider, or IDP for short, for allowing access to resources in your company's Google Cloud. Today, we're going to learn how to set up this identity pool using some of the core parts of Workforce Identity Federation. Before we get started, you will have to set up your Google Cloud organization, identify your billing slash quota project, enable the Identity and Access Management, or IAM for short, and resource APIs, and install and initialize the Google Cloud CLI. We'll start off at the documentation for configuring Workforce Identity Federation, which you can find a link to in the description. We've already got our organization set up, so let's identify our billing slash quota project. I'm using the integrated Cloud Shell, which already has the Google Cloud CLI ready to go, but you can use whichever way to use the CLI that you are most comfortable with. Use the gcloud config set billing slash quota underscore project command to set the correct project by changing project underscore ID to your project. I've changed it to wf-pools-testing, which we'll be using for this video. Now let's make sure the IAM and resource management APIs are enabled for a project. In the documentation, we can just click the button, which will take us to the page that takes us through the process. First, make sure it's enabling the APIs for the correct project, then click Next. The screen should now say you are about to enable the IAM and Resource Management APIs. Click Enable. After a brief moment, it will finish, and you can close the tab to go back to where we were. Before we move on, you'll need the permissions to configure Workforce Identity Federation. Ask your administrator to grant you the Workforce Identity Pool Admin IAM role, roles slash IAM dot Workforce Pool Admin, on your organization. Now let's configure the Workforce Identity Pool. We'll use the gcloud CLI gcloud IAM workforce-pools create command along with our desired pool name, organization ID, and a description of the pool. In IAM allow policies, you reference the pool by its name, so it is recommended that you give it a name that clearly describes the identities it contains. That's it. The pool is created, but now, we need to create a Workforce Identity Pool provider. A WIF Pool Provider is an entity that describes a relationship between your Google Cloud organization and your identity provider. WIF works with IDPs that support OIDC or SAML 2.0, and it is a little different for each. We have documentation for both, as well as documentation on how to set up Workforce Identity Federation with providers like Azure Active Directory or Okta. I'll go over how to create a pool provider for OIDC. The steps for SAML are very similar and the documentation can help you see the differences. In your OIDC IDP, register a new application for Google Cloud Workforce Identity Federation. Note the client ID and issuer URI provided by the identity provider. You use them in the next steps. To create an OIDC IDP, you'll use the gcloud IAM workforce-pools provider create-oidc command and provide it with the provider ID, the workforce pool ID, issuer URI, client ID, which we registered with the IDP earlier, attribute mapping and attribute condition. Optionally, you can also provide a display name and a description. Now that the pool and its provider are set up, we need to be able to represent the users of this pool in the IAM policies for the project. You can use identifiers to grant roles to a single user, a group of users, users carrying a particular claim, or all users from a workforce pool. To do this, use the gcloud projects add-iam-policy-binding command along with your project, the role, and the principal identifier you are binding it to. I'll bind the storage admin role to anyone in the pool. Now that our identity pool and provider are set up, we need to configure our pool so it can get a credential token when a user logs in. To do this, use the gcloud IAM workforce-pools create-cred-config command. There are slight differences for both OIDC and SAML 2.0 supporting IDPs, and whether you are using file sourced, URL sourced, or executable sourced credentials. For my needs, I'm using file sourced credentials from my OIDC supporting identity provider. 
So all I'll need to provide is the workforce pool ID, the provider ID, the path to the file where the credential token is, and the workforce pool project. You should now have everything set up. To make sure, run the gcloud auth login command and point it to the config file generated from the last step. As you can see, everything is working correctly in my project. For most projects, you'll be building your own login portal. If you use a supported client library, you can configure the client library so that it generates Google credentials automatically. When possible, we recommend that you generate credentials automatically so that you don't need to implement the token exchange process yourself. Thanks for spending time with me today learning how to set up identity pools and identity pool providers. We also covered the configuration setups that you might use depending on your provider. To find out more about how to set up and configure Workforce Identity Federation, follow the links in the description for this video or search for Workforce Identity Federation at cloud.google.com.